designed specifically with marine users in mind, and with a whole host of interesting features and components. Sure, on paper, these Steiner Navigator Pro 7x30 binoculars look like they could almost be the ultimate binocular to take on just about any small vessel out there on the water, be that a speedboat, a small yacht, or indeed a canoe or kayak. As well as this, they also look to me like they could perform very well for many land-based uses as well. But just how well do they perform out there in the real world, under real-world testing and use? In this video, we're going to find out, and we're going to start right now. Hello and welcome to Best Binocular Reviews. My name is Jason. In my last video, I discussed how I went about choosing which binoculars I was going to take with me to test and use on my four-day kayaking trip down the River de Doigne here in southwest France. So if you haven't seen that, there'll be a link up above or somewhere down below. Now that I've returned, I thought it would be a good idea to give you my feedback on just how well each of them performed. And so today we're going to start with the Steiner Navigator Pro 7x30 binoculars. However, please note that in this mini review, I'm mainly going to focus on my experience in using these binoculars whilst out there on the river. For the full review, that contains way more information, including features and specifications, as well as comparisons against other similar binoculars that I simply can't include in this video. Please be sure to check out the link down below that'll take you through to the BBR website. So to begin with, these Steiner binoculars sport what is essentially a modern twist on quite a traditional poroprism shape. But this is something that I really do like, because as you can see, they fit really snugly and comfortably within both my hands, or indeed one hand, which is quite often the case when I'm kayaking down the river and also holding onto an oar or indeed my camera. This, in combination with an outer rubber armor that is quite a lot softer than that which I see on many binoculars that I test, makes them not only comfortable to hold, but gives you quite a lot of grip, which obviously on the water is always going to be a good thing. Another quick point to mention here is that this rubber armor is made from what Steiner markets as their special MBR long life rubber which they say can tolerate salty water as well as extreme sunlight without the fear of deterioration. Now obviously I can't verify this on this particular model without a long-term test, but what I can say is they use the same rubber on many of their other binoculars, some of which I've had for many years, and I've never had a problem with the rubber either becoming too soft and tacky or indeed going the other way and becoming hard and crumbly, which are both things that I have seen on other binoculars from time to time. In the past, I have always used a full compact binocular when either canoeing or kayaking. And thus before receiving this mid-sized Steiner with its rather wide poroprism shape, I must confess to being a little worried that they may not be quite as compact as I would have preferred. But they fitted quite easily into my day sack, along with all my other gear. And then once out on the river and in the kayak, their slightly larger size was really never an issue for me. And I do think that the extra performance I got from their larger 30mm lenses was well worth it in this case. But if I was to go on a trip that involved more hiking and backpacking, then yes, perhaps I would once again switch back to a full compact. The particular section of the Dodoin River that we paddled down was pretty slow moving and tranquil most of the time. And even the rapid sections were for us pretty easy to navigate. This was by choice, as we were going as a family, and thus as well as my camera, the binoculars, we also had my nine-year-old daughter, as well as our dog with us on the canoe. Even so, and as calm as much of the water was, I do think it's worth keeping the magnification down to about eight times or less, as even a slight rocking motion on the boat makes it much more difficult to keep the image steady. So for me, the seven times power on these Steiner binoculars was a good choice, and I would say that on the water is generally a good compromise between image detail and steadiness. The 7x30 configuration on these gives you an exapupil of around 4.3 millimeters, which is pretty much the same as the 4.2 millimeters that you get with a 10x42 binocular. And thus, in terms of image brightness, I was expecting these to provide me with a similar type of experience meaning that they should perform well enough in all but pretty poor light conditions. And this is indeed what turned out to be the case. As well as this, I know from a tour of their factory that Steiner uses excellent quality glass, either Hoya from Japan or shot from Germany, on all their higher end instruments. And so this combined with the knowledge that all the lenses along the whole optical pathway on the Navigator Pro have multiple layers of anti-reflection coatings applied to them, 
meant that it was no surprise to me to find that the image brightness in general, and especially in good to average conditions that we mostly experienced on our trip, was truly excellent. Then, in moderate and even fairly low light conditions, I still thought these performed as well as I had hoped, and it was only in very low light, sort of at around sunset, that the performance noticeably drops off, especially if you compare them to larger instruments like an 8x42 or a 7x50 for example. Then, in terms of the image performance, another definite highlight for me on these binoculars was just how minimal the amount of colour fringing that you can see around the edges of highly contrasting objects in the view. Now, partly this is obviously down to the lower magnification, because in general you see more colour fringing the higher the magnification. But it also must be said that it has to obviously do something with the quality of the optics use and the expertise in the design of the optical system. In regards to the optical coatings, the one that is probably most important for me to mention here in relation to their intended marine uses is the fact that they have hydrophobic or aquaphobic material added to the outer lens surfaces. Steiner markets this as their nano protection, which repels water and thus maintains a better view in wet conditions. Which if you're involved in activities like sea kayaking where there's a lot of spray for example, this can be very important. Even if you are not. This layer also helps prevent dust and dirt from sticking to the lens surface and prevents watermarks from being left behind, meaning that you need to clean the lenses less often and then when you actually do, less force is needed which is always going to be a good thing. As you may have noticed, these Steiner Navigator Pro binoculars don't have a focus wheel, rather they incorporate a diopter adjuster on each of the eyepieces. Often somewhat confusingly described as an autofocus system, and indeed which Steiner markets as their sports autofocus system, I prefer to think of them as always in focus binoculars. This is because once you've adjusted each of the individual diopters to complement your particular vision, the image that you see will remain sharp and in focus from around 20 meters all the way to infinity and you don't have to make any further adjustments to the focus. On a kayak, and with a paddle and a camera to deal with, this was certainly an advantage as it made it much easier for me to use these Steiner binoculars with just one hand. The only real downside to this system is the fairly long minimum focusing distance, but in this situation I found I was mostly looking at the bank, up at the top of trees, cliff faces or further up the river to navigate the best route to take, and thus this was not at all an issue for me. Indeed, the only times I wished for a closer focus was to observe things like the dragonflies and drop wings that would often land on our canoe. Also note that if you really need to, you can actually reduce the minimum focusing distance on this type of system by adjusting each of the diopters and I managed to get these down to about 5 meters. However, this is obviously more time consuming than on a binocular with a single focus mechanism and at the same time the depth of view is also greatly reduced when you do this. When it comes to the included accessories, it's a bit of a mixed bag with these binoculars. To begin with, the carry case is well made and very well padded and thus offers a good level of protection. However, the binoculars fit just a little bit too loosely inside for my liking. The objective lens covers are truly superb and it is certainly a case of a number of small things adding up. Embossed with the Steiner logo on the ends, I like the fact that the cups are obviously designed specifically for this model and not a generic part made in their millions and used by many many manufacturers. Made from what looks like a combination of rubber and plastic, the cups are designed to fit into the ends of the barrels, whereas most cups on most binoculars fit over the ends of barrels and often just look like an afterthought and not actually a part of the instrument. The fit is also tight enough to ensure that they won't come away too easily yet are reasonably easy enough to take off and put back. I also like the fact that they are tethered to the central hinge and not over the end of the barrels, which is often the case. This allows them to hang down in the center of the binocular and completely out of the way when not in use, but are always there and easily for you to replace when you need them. Also important to note here is that the rubber Steiner have used for the tethering looks and feels fairly robust and thus should last as this is a part that often fails on many binoculars that I have tested. The included neck strap is excellent and I would rate it as one of the very best, except for one area. To start with, you can instantly tell that it is very well made using good quality materials and the stitching looks reasonably good and there is no doubt in my mind that it will be long lasting. 
I like the attention to fine details for example. Steiner has added not one, but two metal ring connectors on each side of the strap, so four in total. These free up the neck to move in a more natural position as you bring the binocular up to your eyes and then back down again. I'll agree that this is a very minor point, but the many many straps that I've tested that don't have these can often feel a little stiff and get in the way much more frequently. And so this is something that I do appreciate. As well as this, the two lower rings are actually split rings, which makes it very simple for you to attach these binoculars to just about any binocular harness should you wish. I was actually going to try this on my trip, but because I was also testing two other instruments and had my camera with me around my neck, I decided against the binoculars. harness. But I think using one on a canoe could be a very good idea. Another highlight on the strap is that Steiner uses their click lock strap attachment system on it, which is excellent. Instead of the usual slider system where you fold and thread the strap back on itself, that is a bit of a pain to set up. Steiner has a quick release clip on the end of the strap that simply clicks into a receptor located on the side of the binocular. Not only does this make for a much cleaner integrated look, but it is far far quicker for you to add and remove the straps should you wish. The padded section is for me the part that lets the strap down a little. It is well padded for sure, but it is just too narrow. So whilst it is fine for short periods, I found that it would dig into my neck and thus become uncomfortable after about an hour or so. For a lightweight compact, this would be just about the best strap you could ever hope to get. But for these, I would have much preferred a wider padded section that would distribute the weight more evenly. Steiner actually makes some excellent floating neck straps designed specifically for marine uses and one that is designed to work with these Navigator Pro 7x30 binoculars. And whilst I haven't actually tested it, from the images it does look wider. So if you are planning on using these binoculars more often on a boat and for long periods of time, I would consider getting one. It's priced at around $49, 49 euros. And I'll add a link in the description as to where you can buy them. So there you have it. I do hope that this video has been of both use and of interest to you. If it has, I would seriously appreciate a thumbs up. And if at all possible, please do remember to subscribe as this is something that really does help both myself and this channel to continue to bring you more and more content in the future. Also, as I mentioned at the start of the video, for the full review of these binoculars that contains way more information that I simply can't include in a video like this, please be sure to check out the link down below. Also, if you have any comments or suggestions or ideas for future videos, please also feel free to use the comment section down below. So I'll leave it there for now. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Cheers for now.